like my weekly like life and although you don't see everything you guys know like our family and y'all have been there like to support us and encourage us and anyway I just feel like I just share that like the things that I'm struggling with and so I think I touched on it last time um, in one of my Q&A's that this postpartum has been a lot harder than my past postpartums I feel like with the other postpartums I had just your normal baby blues like just take you had I felt like I had to take time to like get back to my normal self and it was hard and all the things but um, this postpartum has definitely been different and I've struggled a lot more with just my emotional, my mental, and my physical, like all three. Hey friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It is Monday, April 22nd, 2024, and I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Joy Anna Duggar has revealed that she is not doing well following the birth of her third child. And this update was provided in a vlog on her YouTube channel, Follow the Foresights. Generally, I don't post a whole lot about Joy, but I did see this video and I thought she's being very open here, which is very unusual in this culture for women to actually acknowledge their struggles. And two, she is discussing the use of a doctor, which is incredible because it proves that she is doing some things differently than her parents. And she is not going to struggle alone. And obviously with the topic of postpartum being such a hard complicated period for many to understand and there's so much stigma around mental health. I thought this is a great video to make specifically because I have also been struggling myself in the last several months and had to speak to my doctor last week about what I was dealing with and how I was feeling. And I know how hard it can be to acknowledge that you're not okay. And sometimes being open and vulnerable, you never realize who you're going to help. And for that, I will praise Joanna for being honest because this video might actually help other mothers in her culture realize they do not have to stay not feeling well. Anyway, I went and talked to my doctor and she said, she was like, I definitely think that you are struggling with some postpartum depression and so I have been, she took a full panel of labs, which I haven't got to sit down and talk to her about everything. There are definitely some, like some vitamins that I'm really low on. There are some other health things that we're gonna talk about. Um, so I know that some of it is that, is my health side of things, but there's also the um, mental side of things that I have been just really battling and I've never, had to battle something quite like this and so so her doctor tells her that she believes that joanna has postpartum depression and in order to come up with treatment for the de postpartum depression her doctor runs some panels for blood work to find out if there are health issues that are contributing to her feeling not well if you have never had a child uh, you might not realize that once you have a child, your body goes through quite a bit of change. Your baby, when you're pregnant, takes a lot of the resources from you, including your vitamins. And while breastfeeding, you'll also experience like vitamin deficiencies or you'll have lower numbers than normal. Giving birth will also cause your iron levels to go down. There's some pretty common vitamins that are impacted by pregnancy. There have been correlations, according to the VA.gov, on managing 
the treatment of postpartum depression that vitamin D or low vitamin D can cause issues that contribute to postpartum depression. And most doctors will be monitoring vitamin D levels along with iron and B12 and other minerals that are in the body like folate that were depleted through the pregnancy to help bring back those up. But those alone will not solely help the depression. So vitamin deficiency is an aspect of it, but then there's also the hormonal imbalance that comes with having a baby and how those hormones impact your mental status, which is what she's talking about here about how, yes, the vitamins are a part of it. And yes, the health issues are a part of it, but there's actually issues with the mental side of things, acknowledging that this is something outside of her control that she needs help with, which is very rare in the, in the society for women to acknowledge or admit because a lot of times in this fundamentalist IBLP culture, they will learn and be taught that everything with postpartum depression is like weakness or you know it's a symptom of some sort of sin. It's some sort of wicked evilness, but it's not you know, it's certainly not a chemical imbalance. They would never want to admit that because the IBLP and the culture that she grew up in is anti-pharmaceutical specifically, which in theory is one of the many ways that doctors will attempt to navigate postpartum depression. I feel like I'm at a place now where I, I am open and I'm like, I don't want, I don't, I, because you guys do see my weekly, live and I don't I know there are other moms out there that are probably struggling that feel like they can't get their head above the water and I just want you guys to know that I do not have my life all together and I do not always have a great day like there are days when I have to choose to have a good attitude and choose to um, be there for my kids and my husband and Anyway, it's it's not always easy, and my life is not always roses. It sounds like whatever she's going through is different than the struggles that a lot of people witness in her vlogs and on her social media. A lot of people have noticed that she seems to struggle with parenting, and a part of that, not outside of the postpartum depression, is a product of her upbringing with just not having the proper education. Jill Duggar, her sister, wrote about the lack of education the kids have and just this struggle of they're encouraged to have children so young and then they don't have any life experience. So you're just like throwing a kid into marriage that's barely an adult. And then telling them, have as many kids as possible and do it. And you're, by the way, husband can't have an employer because he needs to be self-employed because working with people that are un unevenly yoked is against the Bible in the IBLP. You know, they want people to have their own businesses, not rely on other people, stay out of this world as much as possible. And so a lot of what her struggles have been, a lot of people have equated to her being young. But it sounds like, based on the fact that she said she struggles to even have to get up and struggling to take care of her children and struggling to manage, you know, her day to day activities, that is beyond just being young and being ill equipped based on how her parents raised her. That's not a testimony on anyone else that is from the world of you know fundamentalism or if you homeschool it's not about that it's directly from Jill's book about just the overall lack of education in the Duggar family and how that really didn't set the kids up for bright futures of independence and it truly sounds like it's more of a chemical issue and for the longest time I've always wondered if there has been untreated mental illness in the family I know that Ginger wrote about in her book, she alluded to the fact that her mother had postpartum depression. And Jill, when she was interviewed by, I think a doctor for her lawsuit, also indicated that her mom had pretty significant postpartum depression. And that made it challenging for her growing up because her mom required her daughters to do a lot of the work for her. And because, because Michelle wasn't getting hers treated, it didn't get better, you know, and, and, 
every single baby it can change. Some are better than others. Some you might not even have it, you know. And sometimes with the treatment, you know, women are on medication for a very short period of time and then they start to feel better. And then other times... Women start on medication and they realize, oh, maybe I wasn't feeling great even before pregnancy. And then they stay on the meds because they realize the meds are actually helping them feel better. It's kind of like everybody's individual. And I want to note that like there are other women that are sort of in the fundamentalist world, like Christine Brown, for instance, from Sister Wives, when she had truly, she had very severe postpartum depression that she actually went on meds and she acknowledged that she went on meds. So every single person has to navigate things differently. And I guess it just, a lot of it depends on, you know, what your bottom is and how much you want to manage things on your own, or if you're at your sort of wit's end and you need help. And it sounds like she was at her breaking point and she needed someone to help her from her doctor. And I'm glad that she's acknowledging that it's beyond just, you know, vitamins and body. It's, there's something here that she can't control. Like the last couple weeks, I feel like there's just so much that you, that goes on that you guys don't see. And I want you guys to know that my life is not, it's not always smiles and having fun and all the family activities. Like there's definitely those harder days. And so one, that may not be encouraging, but also you guys know how to pray for me more because it's definitely a battle that I'm struggling with on a day-to-day basis. And I have been talking with my doctor, I've been talking with my counselor and just trying to figure out, okay, what is it that I need to do to feel healthy again and to be healthy and um, anyway. She also mentions that she is seeing a counselor and I don't know if she's seen like a psychologist or if this is someone through church. It's very hard to know, but she said she's working with her doctor and her doc and a counselor to figure out what she can do and what she needs to do so that her life isn't as what appears to feel as unmanageable as it has become. She is being very vulnerable here and I commend her because There's a lot of pressure on women in this culture to just smile through the pain. And there's a lot of shame placed on women where they feel like their challenges and struggles are just because they're not trying hard enough. And if they do more and if they behave better and if they smile more and if they have a better attitude, then everything will just get better. And if they show weakness, that means they're not, there's, you know, Satan has gotten a hold of them. There's a stronghold in their life that's making life unbearable. And it's, and it's up to them to change it. The IBLPs at its core is a self-help model that teaches people that the only cure is the IBLP. The IBLP develops diseases and then it creates a solution for the disease, but you can only get help through the IBLP. They don't want you going to the doctor. They don't want you to see counselors because they will then have to admit that they don't have all the answers and that their entire pro like core teachings are a scam and they are scamming people and harming them with these teachings. Specifically, the medical and mental health components of the IBLP are by far the most problematic because it puts people in such severe danger mentally and physically. It's not just that they're against mental health care. They're also a care against a woman going to the doctor for prenatal care. There's a lot of issues that they have developed around postnatal care. They advise people against certain cancer treatments. There are chapters in their wisdom books where they talk about people should not be on any medications at all. But of course, talk to your doctor about it. They will demonize the pharmaceutical companies because the pharmaceutical companies would maybe help them feel better and then they wouldn't need the IBLP. So they have to keep people sick so that they will buy into their delusional beliefs. And it's really sad. So in this case, I'm really glad that she's one, speaking about it in a public forum because it's gonna touch other people in her community. Two, that she's working with a doctor to help her. And three, it sounds like she's gonna be open to whatever her doctor recommends, which is good. And I don't know if that means that someday she'll say, yes, I'm on meds for this. I don't know if she'll ever admit that, 
you know, to date, we haven't heard any of them really talk about medication. I will just say from my own experience that medication has changed my life. And I was and grew up in a culture and in a family that was very against meds, even though some of my, you know, extended family was more okay with it. It was just not something that was really in my own immediate family. And there was a lot of resistance around it and shame around it. And so for me to seek help and go get treatment was against the grain of what I grew up in. And I know what it feels like to have to go up against everything that you've learned because you think if you can just do everything on your own, you'll get better. And I know like Joy, I hit a breaking point and I had to get on meds. And even most recently, I hit a breaking point and had to get my meds increased and changed because I wasn't doing well. And that takes a lot of courage to share publicly for her, for me. I mean, it's something that I still feel at times shame about because it's like, I'll get negative comments and I'll be called crazy, you know, so you're, you try not to draw attention to it. But then at the same time, if you hide it, then you're, you know, not being truthful, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're, you're helping the stigma increase. And if I've learned anything in the last month, especially with covering really significant cases around death by due to mental health, it's more important than ever that we speak about mental health and getting help and that it's okay to get help. And so for that, I commend her. So she's not doing okay right now, but she should hopefully get better. I'll see, I'll be hopeful to hear if she shares more updates. That was all that was in this video. The rest was just her normal vlogs. So let me know what your thoughts are about this. Have you also had issues with mental illness or, or struggled postpartum? Did you have to recalibrate your own mind from your own upbringing? And uh, if you haven't subscribed, we're getting super close to 370,000 subscribers. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.